Yo and welcome back to the iSpooge Daily channel. This is an experimental tech and media brand and this will be a vlog entry, probably 20 minutes, on the topic of something to do with people judge me very quickly, like before we even talk, based on gossip they heard from other people, judging me before we even talked. So based on assumptions or stereotypes or what have you, and these stereotypes may be based on a number of things, like my most common interactions are Starbucks, where I would go every day before and after work, and then of course work. So these are not professional people. In the live stream, the previous live stream that we did like a week ago, the idea of maybe I've had negative interactions with women came up and no, not at the professional level, definitely, and at the retail, non-professional level, yeah, I've had bad experiences with lots of people. So the class is probably, and previously we've talked about this as gentry and labor, from the, who is the author? Not Ribbon Farm. Dang, it's been a while. See how the chant, how these these waves come. So yeah, my issue is more with like ratchet people who have nothing to lose and no incentive to build themselves up because they've got their social cliques and whatever. They've you know known the same people forever, and that's sort of enviable the towny way. I never quite got that, but I had a good taste of it because I was kind of on the periphery of a bunch of groups, and with time, groups merge, change, whatever, and so being on the periphery of a bunch of groups meant, you know, I, I still had somewhere up through, like, college, like, beginning of college. As I went through college, I didn't really look back too much, and right after college, I left the state to where I, well, to the Bay Area, where I've been for the most part ever since. I've dabbled in going different places for a few months at a time, but I always end up back in the Bay. Now I'm a few hours away. But anyway, so yeah, like when I was a professional, that's how I feel. That's how my behavior and everything are, my work ethic is. Like I went to college for learning basically the formalisms of software engineering. So I was already a software developer, but I went to really go next level. And you don't get next level by becoming a super cracked coder and like being solo. No, you do it by joining teams of super cracked people. Even teams of above average people can bring each other up and create, you know, a all boats rise with the tide kind of effect. So. I'm used to people who are like intelligent and invest in their future. And what I'm living in now in labor is a bunch of people who are like me when I was 17, whatever, before I made the split. You know, because I started off as a dishwasher and a grocery store bagger and clerk, like exactly what I've been doing now recently after no longer being able to work in mainstream tech at least. So that is my background. I'm not above it. I'm not like feeling superior to anybody. But objectively, I've invested a ton in myself. I've spent a ton of time building myself up rather than partying. You know, I've never been in a fight. I've never been written up at work. Like, I've been mugged, yeah. I've been punched in the face for having a smart mouth. Yeah, in school, and I got suspended for it because, you know, the vice principal told me he would like me to flip him a good burger one day, and that was never even a question. I was a software engineer through and through, professional, until, you know, eight years ago when the whole Trump derangement thing happened, and they made a bunch of false claims, and they doubled down, and I tried to call them out on it. That's the whole open table thing that I keep coming back to. 
Um, someone in the live stream asked me if you know I've crossed over from healthy ego to hubris on that matter. And I looked into hubris like I didn't go thorough enough on the whole topic to give a definite answer, but so what lying to the court does and lying by omission or you know painting a false light, these are real uh, statutes, false light, etc. What it does is it deprives other people from being able to make correct decisions based on truthful information. If you lie to a public rec to any kind of record that people use to make decisions on, like every single future employer is going to use open tables, false information to make a negative decision about me. I'm out here homeless, unable to work in my field because nobody can make a correct decision about me because the decision making process has been hacked by open table. I think specifically Cormac, yeah, Rob McDonald Smith is some kind of like monkey's paw, whatever, like he's the main person who is involved. He might have not known the process that he set off, set in motion, but there was never grace, there was never any kind of trying to understand my point of view, where I'm coming from, etc. And even if they decided, okay, my video is getting choppy. I hope we're not going to lose it here. I'm not sure what we can do to let the computer rest. Maybe I can close some programs. Check, check. All right. Sorry about that. So I am seen, OK, so I'm seen as like a skinny, poorly dressed. You know, now I'm not, but first impressions are worth like 40 subsequent impressions at least. And, you know, at first nobody has a reason to dislike me, but then they start getting more and more bold with their bullying and their lying and whatever it is. Like, so there could even be envy because, you know, when I do get new shoes, when I do cut my hair, come in with new clothes, etc. Nobody compliments them, but then when someone else walks in with new shoes or a new haircut or something, people always say something about it. So right there, there's one difference of how people treat me that I notice. Like they don't have to say anything to me for me to know that they're talking behind my back or something like that. But then, you know, just being, being like unreasonable and belligerent from positions of power basically that are just raw exercises of power and not like trying to get to the truth, not trying to work better together, etc. It's just like, I'm going to exercise power over you. I'm not going to explain myself. You know, I'm going to act like you're being uncooperative if you don't do it. You know, there's this picture of the different leadership styles. I think there's three, but the two that I remember are, are leading from above, which is, you know, your picture You've got like a bunch of men and then a bunch of stuff that needs to be moved. And the leader, you know, the boss type guy is there, you know, whipping them, telling them to move faster. The leader is right down there carrying stuff with them. So none of these people act like leaders. They want to boss me around and just like tell me to do stuff because they're a line cook and I'm a dishwasher. Like, so I'm twice their age. Um, I've worked in kitchens for probably the same number of years as them. I just haven't progressed. I don't want to progress. I'm happy being a dishwasher and maybe doing non-line prep, like getting food ready but not actually being on the line. So okay, that makes me a girl who needs to be mocked and you know, and then it's like the training that they give me. It's so, like when the boss is around, it's one way. And when the boss isn't around, it's basically just calling me an idiot and telling me to figure it out. And if I don't figure it out, they call me idiot. And it's like one of those things where you can't go back, you know, you can't argue with someone on the line. I didn't explain why that is, but it's because the customer is wait, literally ordered their food and waiting for their food. So there's no time for an argument there. So I'm smart enough to not, 
try to argue, but I will, like, because I'll always do what they say to do, but if the reasoning or some kind of statement they throw on top of it needs to be argued with, I feel like I should be able to come back and confront them on it later, even though it's not really worth my time. It's like you got to pick your battles. But certain kinds of, you know, it's humiliating in front of other people to just say something false, and now all these people believe this false thing. And if I try to argue with them, they all see me trying to argue with the lion cook, which makes them double not like me and think I'm double not cool, etc. Not that I need to be seen as cool, but at some level, like I need to be able to grow my social circle if I'm going to grow anything at all. Like humans are social. I don't need everybody to like me, but I need people to have a chance of liking me. It's fumbling. Fumbling is more than a failure. Fumbling is actually failing the whole team. So if these people want to be envious of me for whatever reason, and I can think of some, I don't need to get into it. But it's, it's, I forgot, I lost my train of thought. So basically whatever value I have that I can give to people because nobody will see me rightly and because people actively set other people up to see me wrongly. You know, it's the exact same thing as Open Table did. It's we don't like you and so we're going to take this process that everybody knows, this protocol that everybody knows and we're going to hack it so that we make other people see you a certain way and you have no chance to respond in your own defense. And, you know, again, like I think I've, s I've definitely thought this before, I think I've said this before, but if you're in the position of needing to argue with somebody like that, you've already lost. Like, that these people are doing this to me means I've already lost. There might be some, like, appearances, some political reason to go and try to argue it, but really you know you've already lost that battle. You haven't necessarily lost the war, but if they're you know, treating you super badly and making other people, you know, other people see them treating you super badly, which even if they don't make anything up about you, they see that I'm, I'm just doing what, you know, I'm just, I mean, I'm being, I don't swear anymore. So I'm being a little, like I'm think, trying to, I don't know an alternative to a B word. You know, I, they've made me their B and you know, their, their helper, their slave, their, you know, person with no power that they're showing and demonstrating and then I'm now like, the video chopped again. I'm now I'm, you know, self, you know, I'm making myself look bad by talking about it in some ways, like weak, bad is in weak. And yeah, it's just, I, I have no chance to establish who I am amongst anybody. Cause it's like, whenever I say something, this one guy, he's like a handler type person. He might literally be a handler too. He's always hung over, he's always high, you know, like I'm not trying to like rat anybody out or anything. Like there'll never be names or anything on this channel. But you know, he's he's basically a sleepwalker. His vessel is saying, Hey demons, come in and take control of me. And I share a workspace with this godly person who needs to be attacked, who needs to be, you know, persecuted because of what he is. We need to take away his joy, you know. And so that's why I don't work for alcoholics or live with alcoholics. And I don't know how to confront the boss about this situation, like, because he, you know, demon, demon possessed people are charming. And they might even be able to you know, especially like physical hands-on stuff, they might be able to, you know, 
in their hungover or whatever state be able to have some kind of like manic work ethic or whatever. You know, be good at their job while the, even while they're hungover or whatever. And so it comes down to like, if I give an ultimatum between this guy and me, it's going to be me gone. If I say anything to do with bullying or, you know, blaming or saying that there's misconduct, I'm going to be gone. Like, you know, however cool and reasonable and whatever the chef is, if you start bringing stuff like that to a boss, you're gone. I mean, it's, it's purely like protect the company. That's what HR is. This company might not formally have HR, but that's, you know, the specialized function of HR. Protect the company. It's not resolve, issue, resolve disputes between people. No, it's protect the company. So I've got all these parties painting false lights about me, and I think a lot of it is envy. They just don't know why they can't be me. They don't know all the work that I've put in, and when I talk about anything like putting in work, they want to just say, you know, it's hard to even imagine what they would say. But I brought it up and it's just nothing like, you know, I've, I'm like, yeah, I owned a house when I was your age. Boom, is that not envious? Like, I don't sit here and try to gloat, but it's like, these things just come up, you know, when they're, for whatever reason. I mean, maybe I could just not even say things like that, but it's not like I just randomly bring it up. It's sort of like, I've mentioned it once to one guy and once to another guy. And, you know, I don't know, I don't even know what their stories about me are, but like one guy made a comment that he grew up poor and I was like, oh yeah, me too. He's like, not like me. How do you know that? You know, it's the same, you know, the same thing with like being white. Like, what is a white person? I don't identify as white. Like, look in the mirror, you know, this might, might have been in a different workplace or just like, you don't know what my grandparents look like? Well, it doesn't matter kind of th stuff. It's just like, I am who they say I am, and if I try to show that I'm anything else, I'll be kicked down, I'll be invalidated, I'll be ignored. And if they, you know, keep treating me like a dunce and everything, and, you know, eventually you start ruminating, like, I'm really good about stopping this and not doing it, but I still find myself ruminating. And whenever I'm making, whenever I'm making like silly little mistakes, like it's because I'm ruminating. Whenever something slips, it's because I'm ruminating. So it's like they, they beat you down, they keep kicking you, kicking and kicking you, misconstruing your, you, not letting anybody get to know you, being super cool with everybody, everyone's a big group of friends except for you, you know, circles of Red Bull shotgunnings, everyone except for me, you know, like, big party, everyone except for me. And then when I start ruminating, I start actually acting like this dunce that they're trying to convey me. So it's like I'm, I might be coming in, the, sh the boss really likes me, I'm super competent, I never mess anything up, you know, I learn super quick, etc., 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 they don't like this because they want that management spot or whatever the case may be. Like I said, I've got a lot of ideas about what it is they might be jealous or envious of or trying to sabotage or whatever, whatever. But it's like they, they act like that and I start turning into what they're trying to misconstrue me as, what they're pretending I am, etc., etc. So it's a challenge. But uh, we're coming up on the 20 minute mark. That's our customary length. So we'll see what happens in the future of the channel and all this stuff. But thanks for joining and hope to see you next time. Take care. Goodbye.